thank you all for joining us today for the Parkway Ideas Workshop. Um, I'm Mike Carroll, Deputy Managing Director for the Office of Transportation, Infrastructure, and Sustainability, which we call OTIS. And uh, I'm very excited to welcome you all here today. Uh, we've got a great program for you. And, uh, you know, I'm just tremendously happy that we've got to this point because it's taking a lot of work on our part. We know for many of you, it's also taking a lot of work on your part to be here. So thank you for coming. Um, our mission here for both tonight and the planning process overall is to begin a journey uh, to create a welcoming, engaging, and enjoyable 21st century Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Um, it's great to be going on this journey, bringing together some of the best thinkers and designers in the whole world. So we know that the Parkway has served us very well, and we want to achieve more building on what has been accomplished so well over generations and over years here in Philadelphia. The Parkway's always been a vibrant, important gathering place for Philadelphians. There's so many remarkable events that have happened here over the years. Lots of celebrations, concerts, civic expressions. The Parkway is already a home to world-class museums and institutions like the Barnes Foundation, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, not to forget, and also the Rodin Museum. The Parkway is always used by walkers, cyclists, and runners throughout the whole year. It's a, a beautiful space with its tree-lined Boulevard, and it's been an incredible gateway to the Fairmount Park system going out, but also to Center City coming in. The Parkway is Philadelphia's Champs de Lise. Despite changes in the identity and the use of the Parkway over the years, one thing has always remained constant. The Parkway is the premier ceremonial and civic cultural boulevard of the city of Philadelphia. The city and its partners have implemented many recommendations over the years. Actions from the 2013 More Park Less Way, for example. And in doing so, we've demonstrated that investments in public spaces, great thinking, and seeing the parkway as more of a park and less of a highway can really bring people together, build social capital, and reconnect Philadelphians to the parkway and to their own broader communities. So we get here tonight and we realize that we not only have a unique opportunity, but we also have a responsibility to build on these investments and this legacy and this momentum. And it's time to finalize a unified vision and plan for the parkway to take us to the next level and to stretch our ambitions beyond what this magnificent mile could be for Philadelphia. I'm tremendously excited to see the caliber of the design teams participating in the idea workshop and also to have a little bit of a sneak peek at their design ideas and concepts. It's really tremendous work. This effort is building on some great thinking and work looking at the parkway more as a park and also drawing on design principles that are called out by that more park, less way, way of thinking here. Our goal is to bring more people to the parkway, bring more activity to the parkway, make the parkway safe and enjoyable, not once a month, not once a year, but every single day. To make the parkway a destination for people regularly, a place for people to find joy and to connect with each other and new people every day. With that in mind, we are very lucky to have national and local experts here tonight to share their thoughts on the design ideas for this iconic space and the perspective on this moment in time. Mitchell Silver, former commissioner of the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation and current principal vice president of planning at McAdams. David Brownlee from the University of Pennsylvania and Taya Wynn, executive director of the Community Design Collaborative. Very grateful to have them involved in this. I'd also like to thank the Lindy Institute for Urban Innovation at Drexel University for their partnership throughout this whole process in both the planning and a lot of conceptual work to get us here to the Ideas Workshop. I'd like to thank the William Penn Foundation for their support and funding, and also my friend, 
an incredible leader and a progressive thinker, Catherine Ott Lavelle, Commissioner of the Parks Department. I want to recognize also the other city partners, Parks and Rec and Streets have been joined by Otis, but also the Planning Commission and the Mayor's Office. And I also finally want to thank the Parkway Council Foundation, especially the Barnes, for hosting us and all their support around the Ideas Network. So thank you everyone for your participation today. I look forward to hearing from the teams and for the great discussion we're gonna to have tonight. Thank you. Uh, and that was impressive, Mike. You got it within one second of five minutes. Uh, good evening. First, uh, a, a hearty thanks to uh, Catherine Outlevel and Michael Carroll for their leadership on this project. When, when people ask what's different about it this time, because this is a project that has been studied to death, as David could tell you, for 150 years, um, the fact that we have two very strong, dynamic, and progressive leaders in an administration who want to move this forward is what's different this time. So your, uh, your participation is, is well noted and, and well appreciated. Uh, good evening to all of you, and thanks for being with us for this important event. Thank you to the Barnes Foundation for hosting us in this spectacular building. I am Harris Steinberg, the Executive Director of the Lindy Institute for Urban Innovation at Drexel University. Welcome to the culminating public event of the Ideas Workshop for the Future of the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Over the past 18 months, we have had the privilege of working with our friends at Philadelphia Parks and Recreation and the Office of Transportation, Infrastructure and Sustainability on this project to create a plan for permanent people-centric improvements to Philadelphia's Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Tonight, we will see the results of the work of three world-class design teams, Design Workshop, D-Land Studio plus Digsaw, and MVDRV finalists selected out of a field of 18 respondents to an RFP issued earlier this year. The teams were asked to give us first impressions of how they would approach the design challenge. It's important to note that the teams were not charged with coming up with a final plan. This is a vision and a framework for a welcoming, engaging, resilient 21st century parkway for the people that builds upon the city's successful implementation of the 2013 More Park Less Way plan. Tonight is about ideas, as this is an ideas workshop. It is intended to stimulate a sustained public discussion, encouraging all of us to dream big plans for the future of the parkway. By sharing your conversations and shared dreams for this important public space with your friends, neighbors, and elected officials, you will play an important role in ensuring its implementation, including projects that could be realized in time for the semi-sesquicentennial -sesquicenten in 2026. Tried to get that one out. Here's how the evening will work. It's a little bit of like a game show. Each team has 20 minutes to present their vision or framework for the future of the parkway, one that privileges people over cars and one that stitches the parkway into the life of all Philadelphians. The teams will present their work in alphabetical order. They were given carte blanche in terms of how to make their presentations. And an expert panel, as uh, Mike Carroll told you, will then kind of join us on the stage and they'll have 10 minutes to offer their thoughts and impressions on the ideas presented. Again, not with a focus on the project, but on the underlying ideas. We're calling that a lightning round. Design team members will be available to answer questions if needed. Following the presentations and lightning rounds, we will have a conversation with the panelists and Catherine Outlevel and Mike Carroll will join us to talk about the broad themes that were presented this evening. We gave the design teams the following charge. Provide preliminary concepts in a quick and fresh framework for how to make the parkway a welcoming, engaging, resilient 21st century parkway for the people. Think about how we can make the parkway into a people-centric park that also handles traffic, but has amenities that draw people throughout the day, week, month, and year. Think about balancing history and modernity using the construct of urban artifact that architectural historian David Brownlee presented to us in June. Tell us how the parkway could become a cosmopolitan canopy, in the words of the ethnographer Elijah Anderson, a place of racial civility, such as the Reading Terminal Market and Rittenhouse Square. Maintain the view corridor from the Art Museum to the City Hall. And importantly, we asked the teams to think about how to integrate the events of 2020 with the pandemic and the protests following the murder of George Floyd still fresh in our minds. What comes next? There will be no vote tonight to select a final design team. The evening is about ideas, big and small, new and classic. 
The public will have a chance to weigh in on the themes put forward tonight through a survey at www.phlparkway.com. The survey will be on the site in the coming days. The city will select a design team later this summer, after which time the actual project and robust civic engagement will commence. Thank yous. First off, a huge shout out to the design teams who gave their heart to produce truly excellent work in a very short period of time with a very modest stipend. We are indebted to all of you for enriching the public conversation. And thanks to Philadelphia Parks and Recreation, the Office of Transportation, Infrastructure and Sustainability, the Mayor's Fund, the Parkway Council Foundation, the William Penn Foundation, the Barnes Foundation, my colleagues at the Lindy Institute and our panelists. So with that, I would like to welcome our panelists to join us up on the stage. Uh, David Brownlee, Professor of Architecture, Architectural History at the University of Pennsylvania and a resident scholar of the Parkway. Mitchell Silver, outgoing commissioner of the New York Department of Parks and Recreation. And Taya Wynn, the Executive Director of Philadelphia's Community Design Collaborative. And with that, please welcome Design Workshop. Thank you, Harris. Good evening, I'm Kurt Culbertson. I'm the CEO of Design Workshop and I'm joined on the stage this evening by Emily McCoy, who is the office director of our Raleigh studio and a former Philadelphian. I'm also joined in the audience by two urban designers uh, from our firm, Tarana Hafiz and Galen Williams, and also by our very Philadelphia-centric team uh, with representatives from Ground Reconsidered, Kimley Horn, Meliora, Dharma Consulting, and, and, D and CH Planning, as well, well as the Cultural Landscape Foundation uh, and traffic calmer. As you know, and as, as, as Harris mentioned, uh, the inspiration for uh, Benjamin Franklin Parkway finds its, its origins in Europe. And for that reason, our other teammate, PCA Stream, who's developed the uh, re-enchantment plan for the Champs-Élysées in Paris, uh, is also part of a team as well as Mobility and Chains of Milan, who has helped transform the historic boulevards of that city and of the Ring Boulevard of, of Moscow. Uh, we are excited for the opportunity to, to be here uh, tonight and really grateful for the chance to participate in this effort. Much of our work involves questions of environmental justice and spatial equity, and that's a key part of, of this effort. And we are also fier fierce believers in the idea of a citizen-driven planning process. And so we're really excited to participate with you, the people of Philadelphia, in crafting a new vision for the parkway that really creates a great space for all the people of the city. The health and the vitality of the city is often measured by the success of its parks. Great cities have great parks, whether formal, organic, romantic, or modern, all great parks have frameworks with one theme in common. These are places where the entire community come together. Whether it's the Champs-Élysées, which was transformed by architectural follies that created place for people, art, and nature, uh, to come together, or Broadway from Times Square to Madison Square, to, which was transformed by paint, paint and, and plastic chairs. All of these significant spaces have evolved because the people refused the status quo and were ready for an evolution of their beloved public space. Our approach to the parkway honors Gray Bear's original design intent, but we will work with you to form a catalyst for transforming the parkway from a major roadway to Philadelphia's garden. The public ground plan for the parkway will anchor Philadelphia as the best modern city in the world. As a plan, a plan informed by all, it will serve many generations to come. The rallying call of more park, less way is a wonderful campaign to reinvigorate the parkway, but we must do more. In light of COVID-19 and the rise of social issues such as homelessness, and also the need for police reform, it's clear that our public spaces must do, must do much more than be places for respite and recreation, but also places for democratic expression and cultural exchange. Once again, Philadelphia is at the forefront of another chapter of an American urban renaissance. And this is not a new idea. The idea of a bold, democratic, and, and inclusive space was Gray Bear's original vision. His vision to link the significant cultural institutions by using the parkway as a connective tissue from the art museum to City Hall through a series of garden rooms and framed views along this axis is significant. 
However, Gray Bear's plan was never realized. And over time, the parkway has developed in a piecemeal fashion, most notably in the 1950s when the Vine Street Expressway cut through the city and has lost its original intent. This layered history is what makes the parkway so exciting and inviting um, and inspirational. The site's evolution uh, can be seen and mirrored to significant historic events throughout time, and also a direct reflection of a society's values over time from industrialization to today. So what does the Parkway say about our values today? Our approach to, to the Parkway's next evolution is to gather and facilitate, not dictate, what the Parkway will become. To begin, we always start by listening. We reached out to Philadelphians to, to hear their many stories about their perspectives of the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. And although we see some similar themes of people feeling that it is danger dangerous and uncomfortable, Philadelphians certainly hold the Parkway in high regards as their public space that's sacred. Here are just a few community voices that we gathered as a part of the ideas workshop, this and we also song. collected some audio. Your legs hang out, and it makes you feel like you know you're sitting at something to offer, and then you fell in love. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we are here. Uh, we also believe that listening extends to understanding the site's function today. We also believe that what met gets measured gets done. And with this in mind, uh, we can evaluate the existing conditions so that we can have clear measurable objectives as a part of this plan. Starting with traffic, it's clear that the traffic is very heavy in the morning and the afternoons. And when it is light, people are speeding almost 20 miles an hour above the posted speed limit throughout the parkway, using it as a dragway almost. Uh, this traffic also results in crashes, sometimes fatal, but also other detriment, uh, such as poor air quality. Um, even when you're outside of the shade of the tree, it can be 20 degrees hotter. And most notably is the sound. Uh, even when we are on the site visit, when you're next to someone, you can barely hear them speaking. The decibel levels are 30 decibels higher than what you would normally feel comfortable with um, in, a, in a similar type space. Lastly, this effort presents a wonderful opportunity to safely connect regionally, whether it be to the Schuylkill River Trail or locally to the nearby neighbors. With this understanding of history in place, we want to dream big. And as a guiding light for our effort, we've established five uh, guiding principles that lead us into our framework plan that we'll go through tonight. One is to honor the identity, culture, and history of place. Two, enhance pedestrian comfort and micro mobility. Three, integrate democratic design and inclusive programming. Four, create an environment that serves multiple functions, whether it be mitigating the heat island, uh, managing stormwater, or providing habitat. And last but not least, build economic and financial sustainability into the framework plan. So to realize this transformation from parkway to park, we have suggested 10 big moves. First, make the parkway a destination, not a place to pass through. Second, disconnect the parkway from the interstate. Third, make Logan Square a square again. Celebrate the connection of the Schuylkill River. Develop an events overlay that allows for multi-stage performances of varying scales with supporting infrastructure and avoid the challenges of setup and set, uh, set down. Bring art and education to the street and out of the museums. Program the space for the diverse population of the city and the visitors. We have to study not only the designed heritage of the space, but also the, the heritage of the changing demographic and culture of Philadelphia. Tell the whole history so everyone sees themselves in the history of this place. Reimagine the parkway as a sustainable landscape of interconnected gardens, as Grayberry first imagined. Develop the comprehensive parks, operation, maintenance, and funding strategies for the 11 entities that all currently have a role in the maintenance of this landscape and engage, engage the community in creative and fun ways to promote open dialogue and community-based decision-making. 
These are ideas, they are not proposals, they are collections. We welcome the arrival of the rail park as a way of bringing people to the parkway without automobiles. We hope to bring water back to the fountains of the art museum in a safe and sustainable way. We envision a connected network of pathways with cross paths to the parkway on one minute intervals instead of the 700 foot block dimension that it's there now. We envision a set of architectural follies that serve as restaurants, art installations, uh, comfort stations, um, micro mobility hubs, and micro business locations to, to, for uh, the broad community. We envision a day when the Vine Street Parkway is covered and the Shakespeare sculpture becomes a reading garden adjacent to the library. And in memory of the great parkway dances, a tango park where all of the people from Philadelphia will come to dance. We've anticipated with the change in traffic, the removal of lanes, uh, the right sizing of parkways for uh, under 35 mile an hour speeds and the return of bikes and pedestrians and transit to the parkway to complete Gray Bear's vision of a cross access to that parkway, uh, connecting great views to the river and perhaps opening up Shuko Beach or the river taxi station or the Shuko Steps to have access to the water um, and a range of other activities to calm traffic. Um, and so how are we going to do that? How are we going to create park and uh, more park and less way? There's some key moves here. First, uh, there's the possibility of, even, of leaving Martin Luther King closed or converting it to a parkway. And we think most importantly, perhaps an extension of Martin Luther King, which would allow traffic to connect uh, to uh, Market Street and the heart of the city without using the parkway uh, as a through road. Perhaps we can divert traffic to the edges of the parkway and be supported by the existing urban grid of streets, which we think is more than adequate to accommodate the available parkway. We know that uh, roughly 25% of that traffic comes onto the parkway by Martin Luther King. Another 14% arrives by the 21st Avenue off-ramp of the interstate. Disconnect the parkway from the, from the interstate. Uh, Collowell is only five blocks away and by improved off-ramps uh, allow that to happen. An auto-free uh, uh, Logan Square and as you see in these diagrams, the possibility of creating uh, micro mobility hubs. All around the world, people are rejecting the idea of cars as a given. Be it to Champs-Elysees where PCA Stream, our teammate, dramatically called for a road diet of that road or Oxford Street or London or Broadway, as I mentioned, which was pedestrianized with paint and plastic chairs or runway park. Um, in Shanghai, these are all examples from around the world where uh, people have been given prominence in the space, not cars. We know we have to have a plan that can be implemented and can be realized over time. We are, we are dreamers, but we are also pragmatists. We think there are three major stages of evolution. The first, 2023, one of tactical urbanism, a fancy word for what's the stuff we can do right now? What's the low hanging fruit? How do we make that happen? And there are a set of activities. I'm not gonna do what Harris did and try to pronounce 250th, but we know that anniversary is coming forward and there are steps that will be needed for that. And then there are longer term steps that will be needed uh, that will take political will and financial capital and so forth. Tactical act, uh, urbanism consists of access and mobility plan, developing the phasing plan, what we're talking about tonight, perhaps the creation of speed platforms or raised uh, crossings at the Rocky Steps or uh, along the, the uh, diagonal streets that are part of that, the Ben Swanger Triangle, uh, as a way to begin to calm traffic. And we've suggested here the removal of the speed lanes on Eakins Oval as well. By 2026, seeking capital funding and, and implementing some of the ideas we'll talk about in a moment. And then long-term realizing the capital visions. Um, the components of, of the plan in the near term may include a parade ribbon. As we calm traffic, as we reduce the amount of traffic that's loaded in the park, we can envision the center lanes of the parkway becoming a grand uh, art boulevard, properly lit, uh, fascinating ways that stretch from the art museum uh, to the Logan Square Fountain uh, that becomes, uh, as is often the case now, but on a year round basis, an opportunity for art installations and par parades and so forth. Um, over time, uh, the grand horticultural tradition of Philadelphia can be drawn upon uh, and celebrated as a foundation for the plan. The ideas of displays 
of, of pollinator gardens, of native plant use, of low water plant use can become part of that. And then over time, the realization of connected gardens along the length of the parkway. The second step is inclusive gardens. Gray Beer envisioned a boulevard that was embroidered, as he said, with a series of connective gardens along its length. We know some of those gardens, the gardens here at the barn, the Rodin uh, Museum already exist. We know or can speculate that a third garden at the Calder is on the way. But we see the opportunity for more gardens that really speak to the diverse, diverse culture and heritage of the people of Philadelphia. Perhaps Aviator Park is connected with the Franklin Institute and becomes a science garden uh, or a technology garden. Perhaps as the Vine Street Parkway has covered a new garden, a science garden, a physics garden might, might uh, be built next to the Franklin Institute that ce celebrates the medicinal and historic plants of all of the cultures of the people of Philadelphia. Perhaps there's a water garden that celebrates green storm order management. We can imagine a games garden. Many of the recreational activities that are found on the parkway today are very Eurocentric. Can we create a place for games from around the world where everyone can find a place to play upon this parkway? And as we said, can Tango's uh, Park become a place for all Philadelphians to dance where all of the dances of the world uh, can be celebrated? So this idea of a linking of connected gardens. And as I mentioned earlier, can we celebrate water as Gray Bear originally called? Reaching and connecting to the river, returning the Logan Square uh, fountain to a true public space with parks diverted or, or cars diverted around the perimeter of space and returning fountains to the gardens of the, of the art museum. It will be a transformational process over time. Today, we have six lanes with a paved median two outside lanes in, in the, in the multi-way configuration, 10 total lanes of traffic far greater than what is needed to carry the traffic today. Over time through tactical urbanism, some of that space can be claimed for celebration for art uh, and so forth. Over time, the spine can be claimed and those multi-way sections may in fact be closed to traffic and returned to dedicated bike lanes or recreational space and so forth. And then finally, Someday, the curbs can be rem removed and the parkway may in fact become a park. We also think it's important that the solution be a sustainable landscape. There's a potential to, to, to treat and store over a million gallons of stormwater, significant uh, annual increases in energy reduction, air pollution, we believe through this, these ideas can be cut by a third and 72,000 pounds of carbon sequestered. We also see the engagement process as a lab for innovation with the community, with the goal of presenting a spectrum of options from more cars, which no one's really looking forward to, to less cars, to everything in between, or no cars. Our approach is an inclusive process where everyone has a voice and everyone has a seat at the table and where a diversity of perspectives are valued. Our value as an organization is our ability to facilitate conversations with a wide variety of groups, whether that be the general public, neighborhood liaisons, stakeholders such as business owners, and multiple departments within the city of Philadelphia. And from these conversations, we aim to integrate a wide range of needs and uh, maximum flexibility and usability within the space, whether you're a local resident, a regional visitor, or a global visitor. Over decades of experience and definitely accelerated through COVID-19, our team has developed a series of several proven strategies for effective engagement to gather diverse perspectives. And we anticipate that a wide range of these tools in our toolbox of engagement will be critical to the success of this project. This includes, as we've already started, collecting people's memories and dreams for the parkway and telling everyone's story and their vision, not just one version of history or one perspective. This includes utilizing digital technology for digital wayfinding and also using augmented reality and virtual reality to help tell that story in new and exciting ways. And of course, using social media as a platform to gain momentum, but maintain momentum as the project moves along now and into the future. 
We couldn't agree more that versatility is the Parkway's cultural value, and we hope this framework embeds maximum flexibility, usability, and versatility in the plan that we think will make this a, a key to success for the future. The ideas presented here tonight offer the people of Philadelphia a choice. There are plans in the works that would increase the presence of automobiles on the parkway. Conversely, we believe that through the implementation of the ideas presented here, it is possible over the time to eliminate cars on the parkway entirely to evolve the parkway into a park, Philadelphia's garden. But the choice is not ours. What do the people of Philadelphia desire? Even more automobile accessibility? The status quo? Greater calmed multimodal accessibility? Or a park without the intrusion of automobiles? The choice is yours. It is our intent to work through these choices with you, the people of Philadelphia, through a rich and robust engagement process to determine where the, this wonderful community asset should lie on the continuum from parkway to park and to chart a vision for the future of this great landscape. Recognizing that the idea of parks in Philadelphia was given form by William Penn, it seems appropriate that this research-based team conclude with a quote by Penn who said, knowledge is the treasure of a wise man. Penn also said, patience and diligence, like faith, remove mountains. Deeply inspired by this legacy and all of the Philadelphians we have come to know in a short time, Team Design Workshop is ready. We thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Kurt and Emily, for, uh, for that inspiring presentation. So now we have uh, what we're calling our light lightning round, and we'll try to do it as snappy as possible, starting with uh, David Brownlee, who will kind of give us his impressions in the first couple of minutes of, of this part of the process. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you for that inspiring presentation. Um, I am going to, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that most of us are not going to claim that getting, getting uh, the cars off the parkway is a new idea. So I'm not giving any credit for that. Um, and, and so in my comments on, on this presentation and all of them, I will begin by talking a little bit, uh, saying a few words about what I see as the ideas about how to get rid of the cars and then a few words about what is proposed to replace the cars with. Um, first of all, getting rid of the cars in this proposal, I think, excitingly suggests the possibility of shutting down the on and off ramps from the, from the Vine Street Expressway um, uh, and diverting the traffic that comes across the Schuylkill River uh, to uh, the, what is now the half-abandoned trolley tunnel under Aikens Oval, making it a two-way road. Um, that would, and taking the traffic that now comes in on the Kelly Drive and diverting that onto Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, uh, on, uh, that, in fact, would, of course, increase the traffic on Pennsylvania Avenue and ultimately on Spring Garden Street as it connects to the tunnel. Unfortunately, Pennsylvania Avenue cannot, does, can't be connected to Callow Hill Street as it might have been if an apartment building wasn't just built north of the Renan Museum. Um, but it does seem to me that Pennsylvania Avenue um, and, Calo and, and Spring Garden have the capacity uh, to be developed into, into really quite wonderful boulevards. Um, and I think that that's an important part of this project. Um, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the possibility that Pennsylvania Avenue could be something other than a linear parking lot is very attractive to me. Um, the um, the uh, banishment of, the, of cars from the circle in Logan Circle also seems to me to be feasible and desirable once you get rid of the cars from the, cent from the, from the parkway. Um, the parkway's three roadways it's proposed will be converted ultimately into a garden um, at the center uh, of, uh, uh, of a zone uh, that is, in fact is so entirely garden-like that the curbs can be removed. I'm actually sort of fond of the curbs, um, only because they remind us of the historical structure, this great simple line. So I would call for some preservation of curbs. Um, the, the connection to the Schuylkill is, I think, a brilliant idea. 
um, uh, the, um, the immediate adjacency of the Schuylkill River to this site is something that we lose sight of because, well, we can't see it. And I think that that's something that uh, some folks from out of town have, have made me realize again. Um, I do think that there is um, uh, an extraordinarily attractive idea of a parkway that is activated by in many small places of small gardens um, that would depend, frankly, on programming and activities generated by institutions on the parkway and elsewhere. The management of the generation of all of that activity is not something that's inconsequential, and I think it's something that we need to ponder as we think about what will fill this space. Um, and finally, I love the idea of, um, of little architectural follies scattered through the park, especially because some of them might serve food. <laughs> Different kinds of food. Uh, Perfect. Oh, there you go. Mitchell. Sorry, I failed to use that. No, you did well. Mitchell, <laughs> you want to give us your impressions? Sure. Well, first, I just want to commend the city of Philadelphia. Welcome to the 21st century. You're following other great cities around the world, as was mentioned, Barcelona, Paris, London, even New York. We took Times Square and closed off Times Square, the crossroads of the world, to traffic, and it works. The cars adjusted. So I want to commend uh, for you for taking that step. Now, in terms of this uh, presentation, uh, outstanding presentation, uh, very inspired by what I saw. Uh, really caught me when uh, you said from roadway to garden, but also a place for people. That was quite evident. Also, there was a slide, and it's something I've often said, that cities are layers of history. They evolve and change based on the behaviors. And years ago, we had horse carriages. We didn't have cars. And now, even in Central Park, we're thinking of the next iteration because cars were allowed in the park. Initially, it was carriages. So to understand uh, not only cities and layers of history, but the heritage that went along with it. So I appreciate the slide that you were showing the timeline of how the parkway evolved based on the culture of that time and who lived here. Uh, it's also about the heritage of the land. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed all of the 10 big ideas. There was not one I didn't disagree with. Uh, and I looked at them each carefully. Uh, each one you hit a very, very important big idea move. So I commend you for that. Uh, like David, uh, I commend you for embracing the Schuylkill. I was here for a conference a couple of years ago, walked down the parkway. Thank you so much for taking this bold move because that was not a great experience. As I walked down, there weren't many people there. And then two days later, I ran on the Schuylkill and turned around and said, wait a minute, there's a museum. I had no idea they were that close together. So to embrace it, there's something about water that's soothing. I'm about to move to Raleigh, North Carolina. We, we don't have really water there, and so don't take it for granted. Uh, there's something soothing and romantic about water, and to connect uh, both this new park uh, to the water to me is important. And I also saw a little pool, so I don't know if you noticed, there's a little pool in the river, so now not only can you look at it or canoe or row, but you could also dip into water, so that's really engaging uh, with nature in a very new way. And then the tactical, the 250th anniversary, and then the uh, realized vision uh, to me was also a very good move. It's showing how you can take a step in the right direction to do the low-hanging fruit to make sure that you'll start to see change incrementally happen. The art, the inclusive gardens, uh, celebrate water, and the landscape performance. These are all very important uh, values for the 21st century. And then again, the five guiding principles which framed all your work. So I was very excited about this proposal. I can see uh, because you took the tactical urbanism approach of how you can slowly inch your way toward to see a new, uh, more park and less way. So I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Taya. Thank you. Well, I want to commend you guys. Uh, similar to the two gentlemen sitting next to me, I do echo many of their thoughts as well. Um, but thinking of this as really a world-class place. I'm not from Philadelphia originally, sorry to all the Philadelphians in the room. Um, I've been here for 12 years now, so I hear I'm almost able to call myself a Philadelphian. But I have traveled to many of the cities that we have compared the parkway to tonight and many that we have not. Um, and I think this is a proposal that's starting to move in the direction that reminds me of those, what we like to now call big cities of Paris, of London, of Chicago, of New York. and. I think it's important that Philadelphia become recognized because I think it already is one of those cities. Um, and it's important that our locations and our public spaces reflect that. 
Um, my question is because while I do agree with the kind of phase out of the car, is how are people getting here? Because I've lived not too far from the parkway for a really long time, and it's not the easiest place in Philadelphia to access. Um, and so I think part of what makes it special is you know, everybody comes for big events. We come for the 4th of July. We come when the Pope is here. We come when there's a protest. We come when Jay-Z and Beyonce want to come and perform for us. But, you know, the only people you typically see running around it regularly are the folks that live close to the parkway. And we know that that's mostly Center City, Fairmount very high value neighborhoods. So my question is, what is going to be the driver that brings the rest of the city to the parkway? I think you guys have put lots of programming onto the parkway, but it's a lot of programming I've seen before, right? Parks and Recs has done it, Knight Foundation has done it, the museums have done it. What's gonna make them different this time? Um, and how are we getting people here? Because right now, most Philadelphians do get here down here by their car. Um, the thing that we are like also kind of eschewing is the thing that is connecting a lot of those folks to the city. Um, I do love the idea of this reintegration of water. Uh, I know the fountains are off now. They're not always off. Um, and I think that's something that we also need to wrestle with because you often, when they do have water, see people using them in ways that the fountains are probably not supposed to be used for. Um, and so I think finding ways to both accommodate the public use of spaces with water as well as still have kind of the grand fountains is really important. Um, but also I think finding ways to engage the institutions. A lot of the institutions on the parkway actually don't face the parkway or offset from the parkway, right? And they, they feel like gated, um, like gated enclaves when you're coming down the parkway. And so what opens those up? Um, it would be really great to one, both be able to get more people to use some of those institutions um, and kind of get rid of this idea of the like fortress in the garden um, that a lot of people experience when they walk down the parkway. So those would kind of be things that I, I hope as this moves forward is considered, but I absolutely think that the 10 big ideas are great and I'm curious to see where it keeps going. Thank you, Taya. Um, any closing thoughts from the panel? We have 25 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Could we save them till the end? I think we can bank that. Yeah, but <laughs> the, one, the one quick point I'm gonna make is that you know, the words diversity, equity, inclusion are now batted around as if, you know, it's everyone's campaign. It's the way we want to react after Black Lives Matter. Just want to make sure as we go through this process, we truly understand what each of those words mean. They're packaged together. Each one means something different. And I can tell that's your thought as you do the outreach. But just take the time to understand what each word means. Inclusive people believe just means included. No, it means that I feel safe, that I'm welcome. There's food, there's activities, there's a design that appeals to me, that makes me feel like I belong here. It's not just we want to include you. So as you go through those, I just compel this entire community to make sure you understand those words because to me that will be the success and won't just be a campaign. I always say that diversity, equity, inclusion is not something you do, it's who you are. And so I just want to make sure Philadelphia embraces that so that when this goes from parkway to park, they make sure it's a park for everyone. Thank you, Mitchell. And thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is D Land Studio and Digsaw, who will take the podium for 20 minutes. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> I didn't know there was a whole, like, yeah. oh, oh. all right, well, I needed a little sip. So um, I'm Susanna Drake, uh, principal of D-Land Studio, and this is Jamie Unkler, uh, principal of uh, Digsaw. And we are here to present our initial thoughts, and I'll step a little closer to the microphone so you can actually hear me. Um, so thank you for inviting us to present our, our work tonight about this incredible open space. Um, we uh, recognize that the Parkway presents a bold vision, um, but the Parkway also has been in evolution since it was first proposed, after initial construction and into the present day. Some of the solutions have wounded the city at the expense of local residents and visitors. 
Our goal is to heal the, uh, the thousand cuts of roadways and incremental decision-making that weaken the health of the city. We recognize the complexity of the city and region um, and seek to embrace a more holistic view. It's time to address the issues of our times, including racial equality, uh, threats to democracy, and climate change with a bold new vision. And this requires deep research and understanding of natural, cultural, and economic forces that shape the place. So we present to you uh, more than a solution, um, a, a process, um, and uh, that we've come to after an intense uh, week or two <laughs> of, uh, of collaboration with our team. Thank you. That's an extraordinary and, and just incredibly exciting experience to be participating in this. And uh, I think our teammate, James um, Johnson Pete said, um, and you'll see in a moment, said, everyone has a Parkway story and you'll hear his. And I, um, I've got hundreds of them because I grew up uh, just behind the, Fr the Franklin Institute and I live now just uh, on the other side in Fairmount. And uh, I could tell you a lot of stories some 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 more appropriate than others i wouldn't wouldn't tell you about the eagles parade <laughs> though that was you know exceptional um and i think for us this is a, this i think our process is one that's really deeply committed to engaging in everybody's story and that's really at the core of 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 our interests and the interest of the of the work that we've done so far and i think we're interested in the history of this place we're interested in what it means to everybody, and we're interested in how it can be something for all Philadelphians and all of its complexity. And that's the, the kind of essence of the, of the thinking that our team has done so far. We see this as a story that's by no means complete. We imagine a different future. And uh, for us, this Ideas Workshop is really the beginning, the prologue of a story that we're really excited to no matter what the outcome, excited to, to see unfold. And, and we thank you. I think we're gonna share our, our video, a video that we prepared, which I think um, best encapsulates our, our whole team's um, initial thoughts. So with that. Thank you for inviting our team to present our preliminary ideas for the redesign of the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. We're inspired by the rich, layered history and complex evolution of this public place. The ideas of more park, less way, the success of the Eakins Oval program, and the promise of its future. We believe that our expert team can bring both a bold new vision and build upon important city and community-led initiatives already underway. Together with our expert team, we propose an idea that we call Systems Beautiful. We intend to balance new and creative explorations with key ingredients from the parkway forms and functions. For the next iteration of this place, our Systems Beautiful framework aims to take a more holistic and inclusive look at things, studying the past and present parts to inform the future whole. For example, Beyond the connections essential to the City Beautiful movement, art, architecture, and landscape, we'll study the interconnection of infrastructure, economics, and environment. Ultimately, we want to make a civic space for people. Today, we'll present our vision. Our experts will give an overview of how their systems will operate, and we'll talk about history, and then consider how a more holistic view might heal the wounds of the current condition. We believe that the most important system is the polis, or the people who use the parkway. And so what did we do? We went out and talked to the people and here's what they had to say. I'm here to go to the art museum. I'm walking my daughter's dog. I'm considering moving here for school. Celebrate my birthday and take pictures. I'm here in particular to, to check out the expansion of the, of the art museum. Today I'm here with my grandson. Softball game. My son has a baseball game. How neat it is. Hi, I love how free it is. Like yes. You can just be, have a picnic. Like, you don't see Like, this is a real nice, safe place. Yes, definitely. It's actually pretty open here. So I do like that. 
Well, I love the fact that it connects all, uh, several of the art museums and um, it's really a focal point for the city. It's a point of pride for the city. I love that it's, it's wide open, has a community atmosphere. I love that it's a connector from the art museum all the way to downtown. So far, I just love all the trees. The sites. Yeah. Yeah, you can see a lot of things when you come across the park, you can see a lot of sites. I love the view. I said, I, let's go look at the view. It also draws people from all over the country and the world, and that intersection of a lot of different kinds of people was great. The historic features of the parkway, how inclusive it is when you look out, you see all different types of people, all different nationalities, brings everybody together. The beauty, beauty and diversity of the beauty. Uh, the buildings, uh, the parks are well kept. It's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, welcome to the city. I would say art, you know, bring more art um, from from local. Make it more colorful. Yes, Make definitely more colorful. Time, you know? I would add local artists, artwork, like sculptures and stuff, just like popping out in different places. That's what I would do. Yeah, I'm going to say I would change, I don't like the cars there. I think it should be pure, you know. I think people should be walking down there. Um, I would I would like to encourage more pedestrian traffic. I would make it easier to cross. If that's your Obviously going on, more pedestrian friendly. There's ways in which the traffic flow just isn't, it's too car centric and, and not good enough for pedestrians. Can we make it more pedestrian friendly? Can we make it a place that doesn't have so many cars? Every Philadelphia has a parkway story. Mine is familial. My mother was a hot dog vendor along the parkway in the 80s. One of my earliest memories is my father rehabbing an apartment on the parkway houses. Five years ago, I got engaged to my wife on the art museum steps. Millions of people create stories on the parkway. As we work to reimagine what's possible for the parkway, this is the opportunity to create the story that's never been told. The one where the parkway is a catalyst and the accelerant for truly just and equitable economic development and community wealth creation for all Philadelphians. Philadelphia has a rich and important history that we want to recognize in our design. So we started by looking at the dynamics of the geomorphology and hydrology. Um, those are aspects that are often uh, left out of historical narratives of cities. The advantages of rich soils and advantages of access to rivers and safe harbors are cited as motivations for the location of urban centers, but the science and the dynamics are often considered as an afterthought. So we mapped these systems to highlight their elegance and their importance. We then wanted to look at the relationship between water and topography. Topography and hydrology combined um, give character to the place. Climate resilience correlates closely to the dynamic relationship of these systems. In cities across the United States, the sublimation of natural systems now correlates to failure of engineered systems from intense storm events. So we feel this is very important. Then, of course, there's the William Penn Plan. When the grid was plotted between the Schuylkill and Delaware rivers, it represented an even allocation of property, a relationship to the hinterlands, and importantly, a bold idea about public open space in the four squares. Uh, the grid was really not impacted by nature, and I think that's a really important point to consider. Looking ahead to the City Beautiful movement, cleaning up the industrial and post-industrial city motivated the angular open space connection from City Hall through Logan Square to Fairmont Park. A national movement popularized through the 1893 World Columbia Exposition and later 1900 AIA Convention in Washington, D.C., highlighted classical architecture and axial boulevards to bring light, air, and civic space to the city. Then we have this illustration we jokingly call the hot mess of the car. Now, in the early years of the automobile, it was used uh, for pleasure to tra traverse the beautiful grand boulevards of this beautiful movement. But unfortunately, in the post-war period, the highway engineered to accommodate speedy passage over vast distances anywhere in the country created an uncomfortable relationship to cities. Neighborhoods were raised, 
communities were depressed and displaced. Ad um, addiction to convenience created increase increasing isolation and conflict. We wanted to explain more about the idea that we called Systems Beautiful. Our vision involves investigation of communities, recreation and events, natural systems, infrastructure, including transportation, economic systems, art and culture, and engagement and uh, place-based systems. So we sketched out a few thoughts that we wanna share with you now. Our experts will now give you an overview um, of their initial thoughts. For me, the great opportunity here is how do we create, craft an equitable economic development opportunity and wealth generation opportunity on the parkway for all Philadelphians? How can the parkway be a catalyst and an accelerant for the type of just economic development that people need to have in the city? This is gonna require a much bigger examination about how we move through the city, how we create and dismantle systemic barriers to equity, how do we think about the nature of risk, and frankly, how do we define what's beautiful? What are the systems that we need to reshape and ultimately dismantle to get to that just then, right? The parkway can get there, get there in a couple of different ways. One, we need to really think about reinvesting in existing infrastructure and building new infrastructure that's both permanent and semi-permanent. The idea here is really to create an opportunity where you can commercialize the space, create these places where you can, if you're a business owner, an inventor, or a creative, you can create in space, you can create in the parkway, right? You can think about how the parkways institutions find their way on the parkway itself. They become more accessible, they become more open to everyone when they're able to do that. The parkway is a truly great civic space. It's probably at its best as the host of, of some of Philadelphia's most significant civic moments. It's easy to be carried away by the crowds, the grandeur of the space, and the sense of awe that it inspires. It's been the forum to many of our city's most poignant moments. But these events have taken their toll on the city. The traffic logistics, the lack of infrastructure, the impact on the space and on the surrounding neighborhood are all issues that must be addressed as part of this planning effort. Events also occur at all different scales, from the massive to the everyday, from the spontaneous to the long plan, from the parade to the march, from the race to the casual stroll. The Parkway needs to accommodate all these different scales and all the people that come here to participate. Our plan will focus on a few key issues. First, we need to rethink traffic. Ultimately, we need to decide whether it's more a place for people or a place for cars, whether it's more of a gathering space or a highway. We need to amortize and strengthen the connections to existing cultural institutions. These are critical partners in the vision. We need to create permanent infrastructure to support these events. These would include power, telecommunications, and sanitation systems. And we need to create a network of services and amenities to support all forms of activity along the parkway, whether they're recreational activities, cafes, restrooms, or food kitchens. The parkway is already a beautiful and active space but these activities need to be more fully supported to be as great a place as it can be. The Benjamin Franklin Parkway was historically bisected by flowing streams, varying topography, and a natural hydrologic connection to the Schuylkill River. Over time, development has changed the natural water flow patterns with hard surfaces and piping water in the sewer systems, leading to contaminated water overflowing directly to the river during heavy rains. We would like to see a reimagined parkway reflecting back on the history of a well-functioning ecosystem with a landscape that respects the natural water system that was once a part of this space. The parkway is currently covered with approximately 42 acres of impervious surfaces, such as roadways, compacted lawns, and sidewalks, all of which send runoff carrying pollutants to the Schuylkill River. Our vision is to create a space that rehabilitates the landscape, hydrology, ecology, and environmental function of the parkway while integrating with transformative improvements to traffic flow, accessibility, and equitability. By removing obsolete paving, improving soil conditions, and including an ecologically diverse plant palette within the space, the parkway ecosystem can be transformed into an extension of Fairmount Park that makes nature visible and accessible to all.
The first transportation goal is to restore the remaining street network, the civic places, and the governance to arts relationship to champion connectivity, social and cultural exchange, and downtown re revitalization. The second goal is to restore the original intent of the parkway by replacing the car dominated place with a place that can comfortably and effectively and equitably meet contemporary needs, such as attracting residents, visitors, and activity, and investment to the downtown while improving safety, traffic operations, and multimodalism. We want to restore the dignified civic and people-oriented space to the west and restore the remaining street network to the east. We want to reconnect people with the waterfront and keep the open street for active transport along MLK Drive. We want to make Logan Square a civic space again. We want to maintain all the view corridors, provide a great frontage road and boulevard on the north edge, create convenient pickup and drop-off facilities, have public transit in the oval, use roundabouts which are slow and safe and are attractive. The two-way operations and intersection arrangement, arrangements provide flexibility, easy permitting, and equitable access. We have a small event here, or here, or here. We have several small events at the same time, all without closing a single street. We have a large event without closing any streets, or a combination of events. Or we can have a large event that extends to the waterfront without people having to cross the street. If we do close the bridge, we can have a huge event. If we close one of the connections across the promenade, we can even have a larger event, or we can have a parade down the whole route. Our approach to transportation honors the city's history and the original intent and role of the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. We're positioning the area's future for success through a sensitive yet ambitious redesign of the parkway and some of the nearby spaces and street network. Building a mix of permanent, modular, and temporary infrastructure that allows the existing parkway institutions to truly be present and accessible on the parkway, while also offering opportunities for recreation, concessions, event programming, business incubation, and more, is the potential economic engine that really can't be ignored. When you couple that with the activation of potential parkway district anchors like 1801 Vine and the rail parks tunnel, it unlocks an amazing set of economic drivers. Imagine a place-based ideas accelerator for artists creatives, inventors, scientists, who can grow their and scale their concepts in the heart of the parkway, or indoor-outdoor set of convention venues that can attract and host thousands of business visitors and provide them with a one-of-a-kind Philadelphia experience. Finally, whether the concept calls for revenue-generating programming, a community investment fund that attracts large philanthropic impact investor and community investor support, a place-based incubator and accelerator that invests directly in Philadelphians and their enterprises, or re-examining the public financing that allows the parkway to make a bet on itself and its future, the outcome has to be one where it becomes a district that builds wealth, social and economic, for every Philadelphian. And now I wanna introduce you to just some initial, more kind of impressionistic views of how that might evolve. These are, you know, a sort of initial glimpses of how these systems might start to emerge uh, along the parkway. So moving from, from the, the diagram to something that might have a, a kind of more romantic or more poetic kind of vision, we started to paint uh, the site and think about the, the ideas of, of art and the city beautiful movement, this past aspiration of, of beauty and bringing sort of this, this garden into the city. So we wanted to think about how these blended systems might start to reveal themselves, how there could be a reinterpretation of, of native vegetation across the site, how we could have inspiration from past topography and maybe add some, some new uh, landform uh, to the, the parkway, how we might Think about the, the erosive forces of, of water and how those might create new kinds of, of edges and new kind of uh, um, sort of intense planted zones. How we might think about past agricultural connections um, and the relationship between the city grid and the surrounding farmland and how that was such an important inspiration to William Penn how we might think about the desire lines and the civic core, that beeline that goes from 
the Fairmont Park down to the center of the city and from the museum down to Logan Circle, um, and how we might think about defining people and the nature of places um, within this context and how we might reinterpret those past plans and create different kinds of forms and how we might um, think about the multi-purpose places and start to reform this landscape. Now, we are sensitive to current realities. We understand that you know we're showing a lot of kind of dreamy plans and that it's very easy to show these things in an animated cartoon, as it were, um, but that there are real roads and, and real people and, that are gonna be impacted by this and real costs. Um, but we wanted to start to say, well, you know, there are huge advantages to making some of these dramatic changes. And if we want to realize the full potential of the place, we need to make some very bold moves. So, you know, even thinking about sort of the, the thread of water and the metaphor and the importance of, um, of Fairmont Park and how it provided the water, the clean water for the city, and that this, this line is this metaphoric connection. It could become a more literal connection um, for that water to the center of the city, and it'd be expressed and become much more didactic. How we could think about creating a space for art and engagement, really bold expressions um, that could start to bring the art out of the museum and into the parkway, and how we could accommodate these large and small events, how we could provide the infrastructure so that it's not such a tremendous burden when these large events happen. So we see tremendous potential in, in making some of these changes and adapting this landscape, making it really a place for people rather than a place for cars. Our proposal is about healing, healing the landscape and restoring native ecologies ecologies that once existed before the site was stripped and overlaid with the city grid, reconnecting to the river and streams which once defined this space, restoring the connectivity between neighborhoods that evolved with the development of the city and were lost in the divide of the parkway, and restoring the vision of the people-centric park space, connecting the city's center with Fairmount Park and bringing together its great cultural institutions. This project offers the opportunity to heal some of the wounds laid bare by recent events, wounds within our community, racial and economic divides and barriers that keep us from truly realizing the promise of this place. In this healing effort, we take a critical look at the past, at the evolution of the parkway and the systems which must each function together holistically for the parkway to be a truly great urban space. Systems are spatial, environmental, infrastructural, and economic. When all of these systems are working together, that's when we achieve something truly greater than the sum of its parts, something truly beautiful. Thank you, Susanna and Jamie, for that truly evocative presentation. Um, I'm going to ask Mitchell to start this one and uh, kind of be the leadoff hitter on uh, what you just saw. Well, let me commend you both uh, for this presentation. Uh, I was struck right away at the beginning when you talked about healing and restore. And when I saw the video first, it was just about uh, the transportation, the thousand cuts that needed to be healed. But then at the end, you, you talked about, uh, which I believe is extremely important, is uh, helping heal the wounds of what we've experienced the last two years. I think we could all recognize when everything else closed during the pandemic, the one thing that remained open were our parks and public spaces. They truly became our sanctuaries of sanity. And then after the civil and, and and, and social unrest as a result of the death of George Floyd and others, uh, 
people for the first time in this country understood the decades of stress and trauma of being a person of color in this country. And so to say the heal and restore, that is a very important theme uh, that should go beyond the physical, but go to the social. Uh, and it's so critical as this evolves that that is a, a theme to me that is very, very important. Healing the land, but also healing the spirit of what has gone on in this country. And this is a city I think that can carry that out. Um, I also appreciated the approach where you looked at systems from community to the recreation and events, natural ecosystem infrastructure, uh, and I and economic. And I did enjoy uh, the part about Ian's presentation about looking at the infrastructure and having a lot of flexible spaces uh, just by dividing it up, whether large or small or multiple, uh, gives a lot of flexibility and opportunity to do a number of different things because people experience space at a large scale, at a small scale, and so it lent itself to that opportunity of scaling at either up or down depending on the circumstance. And then as I was reading it, just thought came to me, not when I viewed this before, but now, that we talked about inclusive. In fact, that was my comment from the presentation. I realized streets are not inclusive. They're inclusive, but they can be inclusive. If we think about it, we talk about having inclusive public spaces, streets as they're designed today are not inclusive. They're exclusive. And so this gives us the opportunity of, to rethink how we can truly make the street, the parkway inclusive, not just by, but virtually by who use it. It cannot just be a single use for cars, as was mentioned. Uh, it has to be opened up for more users, for more people. And so that's something that just struck me. I never thought about it before, but that streets are very exclusive, but they don't have to be. And this opportunity gives us that uh, chance to make that change. Uh, I think those were some of the top line. Um, I really appreciated the closing. It really brought it all together, all the themes in a vision, in a very calm voice. I like how it was so soothing. And I was like, I I'm feeling good now. <laughs> the restoration is happening. Uh, but all, all in all, and again, bracing the water. There, there's something about nature and water that is so soothing to the soul. Uh, and I appreciated the acknowledgement of how we do have to connect back to those ecosystems, to connect back to the natural systems, and to show the evolution of what happened over time, both to this part of Philadelphia, but also to the parkway. So all in all, thank you. Uh, I feel somewhat restored and healed. It's a, heal a long process. But again, thank you both for that presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Tyler. I got to stop going after Mitchell. Still on my thoughts. Um, geography. <laughs> so um, I was really compelled as you guys were, as the video was playing, I was, it made me think about all of the parks that I enjoy in my life. Um, and I think one thing that's really important about parks is that they have to have this variety, right? You go in and some days you want to be scared and you want to go on an adventure and see something that's not typical, right? I don't want to see the grass that's outside my house. I don't want to see the street tree that I could see from my stoop. Um, like I want to see something different and exciting and um, interesting, right? Sometimes you go because you just want to meet your, you know, meander down a path or talk to someone. You want to be calm. You want to feel the breeze. And I think that in your restoration of the vegetation, you brought a lot of this back to the parkway right now. There's not a lot of it out there. Um, and that you brought back multiple ways for people to sort of engage nature, uh, which is really important. I really love, obviously, because I brought up the system of the events for the last thing, like to me, when I think of the parkway, that's what I think of the most. I would love to be able to change that perception of my own, right? Of thinking of this is the only place that I go on like holidays um, because it should be a resource that we go to all the time. And I like the idea of thinking of all these different events um, because then multiple things could happen at the same time. You could, you could support a variety of people and a variety of uses. Um, you know, in the first presentation, I think it was brought up that like, Right now, it's a very Eurocentric place, right? Um, and But there's a lot of festivals, right? And there's a lot of outdoor celebrations that happen across Philadelphia, and they happen in very specific places. And this idea is compelling of like, could we bring some of those to the parkway, the way you see that happen in other cities? You see it happen in New York City. You see it happen in LA. You see it happen in Chicago. Why isn't it happening in Philadelphia? Um, and I think that's also something that's really compelling. 
Um, and I'm really interested in this idea of the restoration. Uh, I think one thing I would have loved to see is like the bad stuff that has happened didn't just happen last year. And so, you know, how are we going back in the 150 year history? I think of things like the indigenous lands that were there originally. I think about things that happened, you know, way back when, you know, when the parkway was built, this was not the most equitable city. Um, and so how do we sort of address some of those lost histories and those uh, scars that were, you know, predate recent events? Um, and I think really important to kind of handle water. I think, you know, water always wins. I think that's something that we as designers and as architects are very aware of, like water, we, we, we always lose against water. And I think Philadelphia has a history of trying to handle water in ways that like 50 years later, 100 years later, we realize we didn't do it the best way and now we're trying to fix it um, and sort of find a way to both kind of remedy some of those mistakes of the past, but also make sure we're not creating new ones 100 years from now is really important. All right, thank you, Todd. David. Water always wins. I, <laughs> I, I, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, for a powerful and evocative presentation and the theme of, of healing, physical and social healing that the landscape brings is a potent force, I think, that should be in all of our thinking. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to say a little bit, of, as I said before, about the strategies for getting rid of the cards and putting in place something afterwards. I think the proposal to, um, to restrict automobile traffic, vehicular traffic to the outer drives and to get it there by way of roundabouts is extraordinarily powerful and I would say pragmatic. And I say that positively because I'd like to see things happen. Um, I think that the, um, the uh, once you get the cars out of the way, and that would include pedestrianizing Logan Circle, uh, once you do that, um, I think you have a very powerful vision of a central space um, that can funk that you depict as as alternating uh, squares of lawn and water features, which reminds me a great deal of the of the mall in Washington D.C., which I think is an it, it does provide an excellent model for a, an enormous space that can be used for multiple small events at the same time, or as one for one gigantic event. And I think that that kind of versatility is you know sort of in the the DNA of this of this environment. Um, I, you, you know, you call upon us uh, to think, as, as, as Taya just said, to think about this as a place for many small festivals, activities, and events. And I suppose we just have to remember that that revolves, involves a lot of organization and planning to do all those things at once. Um, and I do think that that's important. The, your, your evocation of, of, of the irregularity of nature, of, of, of more or less raw nature is potent. And I, I would only say that I think that it needs to be you know, there, there are places for that, and I would, I don't think this is a space that one wants to convert entirely to wilderness. Um, I do think that there's a, I mean, I, I do think that they, I do think that they, I do think that there is something about living in a city that's rather nice, and that there's, there are an urbanity and a structure and order about it. And finally, I want to say that I, I very strongly applaud um, what you say about the about emphasizing economic development and equitable economic development. I think that the potential there is enormous and largely untapped. Um, and finally, I want to say I love the the, the lightweight modular uh, architecture and especially the possibility that some of those small buildings could serve food. <laughs> All right, we get to bank 15 seconds. Thank you, David. And uh, thank you, Susanna and Jane and your team. So uh, next up is our final uh, team presentation, MVDRV. And we have uh, Michael Shade and Jeanette. And Jeanette to uh, make the presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I am honored to be here representing the MVRDV team this evening. Unfortunately, due to the current COVID re travel restrictions, they are not able to be here with us tonight, but they are staying up late across the Atlantic and watching us over the live screen stream. <laughs> My name is Jeanette Quiris, like I said, and I'm with McCormick Taylor. My firm is located um, in Center City, um, really close to the, the project area. Our role on the team is to bring valuable transportation, safety, and mobility experience, not only with the city, but also with the partners SEPTA and PennDOT. 
Our skilled group of diverse local and international consultants have worked together over these past five weeks to come up with innovative ideas for the Parkway's future. Thanks, Jeanette. Hello, my name is Mike Shade, um, Atkin Olson Shade Architects. We're the local consulting architect to MV RDV, and everyone on our team has spent weeks trying to get the initials in the right order. <laughs> <coughs> the younger folks in my office are laughing here now, like they knew it right away, but those of us with gray hair have a harder time with it. Um, anyway, as I say, with the local consulting architect, we've been doing that since the RFP process started and through the um, Ideas Workshop, which has just been a wonderful process, um, led by our partners at uh, MVRD in Rotterdam, as you say, which include Anna, Kristen, and uh, Alex, and others. And shout out to you guys if you are up at 1.30 in the morning there. It's great. The rest of our team includes Connect the Dots and Marissa and others from Connect the Dots are here tonight, David Mason Associates, DVDL, Envision Consultants, Observatoire International, Jeanette from McCormick Taylor, Rebel, and Urban Engineers. Uh, it's been a great team. And we've all been honored to be invited to participate in this design workshop. And we truly enjoyed working with the city so far to uh, and meeting with some stakeholders and with selected public individuals to really get into the design workshop, understand the important challenges that face the parkway, and create innovative ideas for its future. So cue the video. And uh, with that, we're very glad to share this presentation that MVDRV put together. RDV, which presents our team's ideas <laughs> for future, presents our ideas for uh, the future parkway for all Philadelphians, which is really the theme. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is I'm the M of MVRD. I'm a system in Berlin, from Paris, and soon also in New York. I'm an architect and landscape architect. Unfortunately, due to uh, the COVID measurements, I cannot be in a real space with you. I'm looking forward to that this solves soon. I'm very proud and happy that, that we can contribute to your project and this um, opening up or reimagining the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. This project strengthens our relationship. I love you, city, because of the history, and but also because of your search to become stronger, more visible, more there. You can be much stronger. This project can show that and can turn it into an exemplary, super strong urban space that can connect citizens, that can connect insiders and outsiders and can bring Philadelphia to a next level. We show you how we have worked till so far with our team, which is a big group of different, say, uh, specialists, with your team from the city, from the neighborhood in that way, and with people in Philadelphia. We explored your wishes by calling you, by getting your information, your desires, your dreams. We have been translating that into different, say, suggestions. We mix these ideas in, into possible concepts. One of them is the Civic Green Mall that uses the grandeur of this alley and turn it into a gathering space in all its way. The second one is what we call the Green Grid, where the grid system the block system of uh, Philadelphia is continued over the street so that it connects all the part of the neighborhoods in a green, bright and diversified way. And last but not least, we explore this mixage into a potential for a green urban theater where you can meet, where you can look at each other, where you can discuss and celebrate the future. This is a help for you to select. Now you can choose, you could say. This is a model for a process that I can imagine, that gradually you bring opinions together into a very democratic direction. With that, I hope that we can meet soon in real time. 
in the following presentation, we elaborate further how our team's approach and initial ambitions for the future of the Parkway lead us to these first ideas and the Parkway Mixer. First, we illustrate our vision and approach, then guide you to our initial ambitions and topics for the future of the Parkway. And we conclude with our workshop ideas that we see as a starting point for further discussions with you on the Parkway Mixer. The future of the Parkway is about big ideas and bold visions. Therefore, we started this workshop with the open question, what could the Parkway become? How can we amplify the voices of all Philadelphians on this unique site? First, we share our vision and approach to answer these questions. The city defined three goals for the future Parkway. One identity, people at its center, and feasible operations and maintenance. Your parkway should also unite you as citizens. Become more accessible, pedestrian friendly, used and welcoming for all people. Our team in integral design approach links those goals to other relevant urban issues such as cultural life, sustainable mobility, resiliency and history of course. And design a public realm but maximize the parkway's potential to become an active driver of Philadelphia's urban life. That could be the goal. Therefore, we composed a team with broad urban expertise, combining urban and landscape design with public engagement, innovative stormwater and mobility infrastructure knowledge and consulting, cultural programming, creative lighting, and smart financial strategies. Our team uniquely combines local insight with global perspectives to think about the future of the Parkway. We want to inspire bold ideas through local understanding. So the opinions and ideas of all Philadelphians are key for our design. Our outreach efforts will be a call for an inclusive dialogue in three different modes. A citywide outreach to embody the ambitions and values of the community as a whole in a common vision a partnership with local community members to leverage and strengthen existing networks and targeted outreach to foster collaboration with certain stakeholder groups. To create a meaningful outreach process, we will use different tools, such as public ex exhibitions, surveys, workshops, of course, events and virtual experiences, and many more. We will define them and customize them together with the task force groups. With the input of all Philadelphians and stakeholders, we aim to create an attractive and active place, a platform that connects diverse communities and cultural organizations in the city. Our design methodology starts from provocative ideas and that, will, that we will review and refi refine further with you in an iterative process. Several feedback rounds will allow you to inform and influence the parkway design. So step by step, all contributors guide the choice and the elaboration of the preferred design for the parkway. In this process, our team will not only elaborate the bold design ideas, but also come to feasible strategies for their success. A success that maximizes benefits and economic impact for the Philadelphians, that proposes innovative funding models and ensures a successful, successful and sustainable operation of the project. These bold feasible ideas to, from the starting point for a phased implementation. As you can see here, our team has experience in realizing impactful placemaking projects as a part of a larger urban transformation strategy, such as the stairs in Rotterdam, the Isle of Street, Folly in Guangzhou in China, and the Mobility Challenge and Participatory Transformation of Parking Spaces into Green Areas in Rotterdam. In this spirit, our bold ideas will inform small-scale first phase of projects to activate the parkway early on. So, what kind of topics can set the tone for our initial bold ideas? What are the goals and ambitions for the future of the parkway? 
We believe that the parkway can become both a place for the city at one hand and an example for the world, as Philadelphia is as, it's, as the home of the American Constitution. Our team considers the Parkway project as a unique opportunity to link global sustainability goals to local sustainability ambitions and to create a precedent for sustainable urban transformation. Therefore, we aim to include solutions in the Parkway de design that are socially inclusive, culturally connected, ecological responsible, and also economically vital urban transformation. Next to our team's high ambitions for sustainability, our initial analysis of the site and the city has led to a variety of urban ambitions for the future of Parkway. So what are the themes we can derive from these initial ambitions? As a starting point for bold ideas for the future Parkway, could the Parkway trigger new methods of social resiliency? become a stage for the city, be an homage to the historic grid of the city, become a showcase for further healthy mobility and food production, or define a new face on the city's river waterfront. To build social resiliency, we need to engage with Philadelphians. Organizations and other st stakeholders in this. Our first stakeholder mapping shows the diversity of stakeholders and interest groups in the city. And we see the parkway's importance as a place for dialogue and expression. Can we strengthen this role of the parkway? Can it become a people's campus, a place that invites and that stimulates interaction of diverse users and offers cross-sector cultural and educational programs and places for collaboration? We understand that the parkway is currently defined by high-speed traffic as well as challenging pedestrian and bike crossings. This route is currently used as a major commuting arterial with many conflict points for most of the users. In fact, cyclists often end up avoiding this area for many of these reasons. But we already see potential for a more pedestrian-friendly parkway, combining a variety of infrastructural upgrades. Some of the ideas you see on the screen here will be assessed through data to determine the feasibility of these with the project team. Additional ideas beyond what is presented can be assessed as we work with the project team and the city. Based on those, can the parkway become an active super connector for healthy mobility? Can it be a place that offers a variety of healthy, slow traffic connections from and to the existing urban fabric? Our goal here is to reduce vehicles and increase safety for pedestrians and cyclists. We are all familiar with Philadelphia's original plan of a street grid overlaid from river to river and interspersed with five public squares. As the city developed over time and became more dense, the idea of the parkway, a bold diagonal green boulevard connecting the urban core to Fairmount Park, gained popular appeal. And although the parkway today is indeed bold, diagonal, and mostly very green, not all the ambitions for the dynamic and lively boulevard have been realized. The parkway today lacks pedestrian scale and activity. What if the Benjamin Franklin Parkway could reintegrate the original street grid? Overlaying the historic grid on the parkway can create a wide variety of smaller, active civic spaces. The parkway could be an homage to William Penn's original plan, providing more connections to the surrounding neighborhoods and open blocks that can accommodate programs serving the entire city. With, with a tradition of horticulture going back over 300 years, Philadelphia can properly claim the title as America's Garden. Fairmont Park is one of the largest urban parks in the U.S. at 14 point square miles. As you can see from the attached map, the parkway lies in the 100 and 500 year floodplain. That being said, the parkway is facing water issues that will only be exacerbated in the future. We fully realize that stormwater management needs must be addressed in any plan going forward. What if the parkway becomes a lush waterfront park entrance? We could use the aforementioned problems to a positive. As you can see on the slide here, there are various stormwater management processes that could be used. This would only enhance and meet the Philadelphia Water Department standards, also allow for community organizations to work with one another to maintain these. And lastly, beautify the city, which would attract more visitors. 
Next to its green function, the parkway has become a cultural venue for large scale events in the city. We believe that in a post-COVID world, cultural institutions, what they will do outside their walls will become just as important as what they do inside them. We believe it can also provide spaces for cultural activities that are more diverse and of different sizes. We want to create a space that is in constant dialogue with the city's communities and cultural institutions without sacrificing their own identity and mission. What if the parkway becomes a cultural catalyst? What if the parkway becomes a place for cultural collaboration? Um, where small, small scale events organized by initiatives throughout the city meet large national and international events. Lastly, we understand that Philadelphia stimulates programs to increase food safety. And that food culture and regional food production are a strong part of the city's identity. Could the parkway become a food connector? a place that offers a platform for healthy regional and urban food producers, educational programs, and lively gastronomy. So how do these analysis topics and ideas of our brainstorm session with the team inform our ideas for the Parkway? Our Parkway Mixer concept combines uh, these ingredients we discussed with our team uh, together with the city's idea and feedback. During the ideas workshop period, we already started our outreach process as described earlier. And we collected in an initial one week survey, 46 diverse responses to our questions regarding current challenges and desired future identities for the Parkway. And your input helped us a lot to prioritize these themes and to develop ingredients uh, for our design ideas by highlighting aspects that are important to you, such as, uh, for example, creating an oasis of the city or making it useful 365 days of a year, or include more cafes and public art in this project. So we translated your input into different spatial ingredients and interventions that we could uh, integrate in the parkway in the future. And by mixing and matching these ingredients, um, we came up with three initial ideas for the future parkway. The green machine, the active grid, and the urban theater, as we call them. The green machine explores this oasis idea, the oasis of the city. And uh, we were wondering in here, uh, can we bring the lush and green natural characteristics of Fairman Park into the city? and include climate adaptation solutions and all year long activation programs in this green parkway. Um, the green machine combines natural ingredients um, of these ideas that we uh, showed earlier uh, to create a natural link between the city, the river and Fairmont Park, contributing to a cooler, cleaner and more sustainable Philadelphia. And at this, this stage, we can imagine a broad variety of solutions and strategies for mobility, programming, and phasing of this idea. For example, creating a ring road around the parkway to uh, uh, get rid of the cars in its center, or uh, program uh, this place with active uh, landscapes uh, and green pavilions, or start phasing from the green access that is already existing, for example. We will develop this further in the, uh, in the future process. Um, but with this idea, we could transform the parkway that is currently a green boulevard into a lush urban park, a place for you to jog, to walk, to meet with your friends and family, to rest while surrounded by the parkway's flora and fauna. The active grid um, is our second idea. And here uh, we uh, merge the parkway with the city's historic green grid. Uh, in order to bring people in as uh, make the parkway part of the city and invite all Philadelphians to connect to the parkway in a healthy way and allow them um, to find places that are a collection of very diverse programs and active places within these uh, new block structures. Um, the active grid combines uh, urban ingredients into into an urban parkway that integrates um, with the surrounding city 
uh, sort of merges the, the unique access of the parkway with the city's grid and triggers a variety of different uses and interactions in this unique site. And also here, we could imagine uh, different strategies for mobility, programming and phasing, such as uh, creating new sort of flexible road grids that allow for uh, slow mobility for uh, pedestrians and bikes to move easily throughout the site. Um, for programming, we can imagine very diverse, almost urban blocks that can have very different programs like cafes, uh, art, uh, cultural institutions and um, places for new initiatives uh, that are already existing in the city and that need spaces. And the phasing could happen in a very flexible way in this setup. So the, the active grid um, transforms the parkway from a very linear green space into a part of the city that invites you to play and to create and exchange and celebrate with all Philadelphians. The third idea is the urban theater, as we call it. Here we were wondering, can we extend the spirit of Oval Plus, um, of this very flexible, playful space, to the whole parkway? And uh, could we continue the museum steps as a sort of active urban stoop around this flexible space to create a, a safety and a vibrant, pro uh, vibrantly uh, programmed uh, place for the city? Uh, here we combine collaborative ingredients, uh, artistic elements and more performance oriented ingredients into a flexible urban stage, urban theatre that amplifies the cultural diversity of Philadelphia. And also here again we can imagine strategies for mobility, uh, programming and phasing that are different from the other ideas. For example, uh, the access could become a more pedestrian friendly boulevard. Uh, in this option, we could activate the edges to make them actually really part of the city's edge towards the parkway, make them safe and uh, vibrant during uh, late hours or 24-7 and also during different seasons of the year. And phasing uh, could, for example, here start from this idea of the urban stoop and the, the uh, existing stairs at the art museum uh, and continue along the sides of the, um, the parkway's um, edges uh, towards the city. So in this idea, we could transform the parkway from a very fragmented space into a grand stage for diverse activities and events throughout the year. So how do we plan to take these ideas further with you? We will elaborate these strategies in our parkway mixer process with your input. Starting from our three initial ideas, we will review and develop more ingredients with your input. And so, create the future parkway with all Philadelphians together. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to Jeanette and Michael and the MVDRV. Did I get it right? Team. So <laughs> yeah. no. Centennial. MVRD. <laughs> MVRD. Yeah, we have our own internal sort of uh, acronym that we use, which I'm not even going to tell you. Because <laughs> it doesn't work um, for that provocative presentation. Um, so, Ty, you're not going after Mitchell. You're first. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts on uh, what we just saw. Well, we all know collaborative is very near and dear to me. I think uh, communication is important. I think input is critical. And one of the things that was really compelling to me was the way this talked about getting feedback from the people. Um, I thought the toolkit of parts or the ingredients, right, was uh, really exciting because I kind of saw it as this like menu of options uh, that people could sort of engage, think about, choose from um, to really start to make this a really diverse place. Um, I think the flexible blocks are really exciting uh, because I think right now things feel very districted at the parkway um, and to find a way to both allow for a very wide diversity of activities of experiences and of people is um, something that i think is really important to the city and to the space um, and i feel that those that flexibility kind of allows both us to program things now because we know 
inevitably people and situations and cities change over time and allow for us to sort of grow with the parkway, right? I don't want to be sitting here 150, well, I won't be sitting here 150 years ago. <laughs> but I don't want someone to be sitting here 150 years from now, again, trying to plan around what we decide now and trying to do this all over again. Um, I think some of the best public spaces and cities have been there for a long time, right? I think of spaces like in New Orleans where, you know, places on Bourbon Street were pirate um, like hangouts, right? And they were there before the city was there. And there's something compelling about how people tend to go back to certain locations over and over again, even when we formalize them. Um, and so how do we make the parkway that type of space in Philadelphia um, so that people can keep coming back and see it as a resource and see themselves reflected in it and, and really use it as a space uh, for civic interaction. I think that's really critical. Thank you. David. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, strong presentation. Um, again, I'm going to talk about um, the strategies for getting rid of the cars and <laughs> strategies for putting something back after you get rid of the cars. Um, the, this proposal um, proposes, a, uh, you know, in its sort of fully fleshed out version, a very large zone circled by a ring road, which is, I think, a compelling but rather difficult to achieve idea. Um, uh, this would be um, uh, this would be facilitated by an, again making the uh, Spring Garden Street Tunnel a two-way automobile roadway um, by closing 21st Street and burying 22nd Street. Um, those are provocative ideas, and I think that they are suggestive of the the, necess the necessity of thinking at scale if we're going to work at a at a scale like this. Um, the outer drives would be reserved for uh, for buses for public transportation, and I I must say I think that's an extremely important thing to put into the mix. Um, I think there has been, relatively speaking, little discussion of public transportation in these presentations, and that's of concern to me. Um, uh, at the center, once you get rid of the cars, um, a great lawn um, is, um, is envisioned replacing the central roadway. Um, again, an attractive idea that resembles the mall in Washington, D.C., with its capacity to host events of various sizes um, or multiple events at the same time. Um, a valuable connection to the Schuylkill River is again proposed. I think that's um, going to win um, every contest that we conduct about this, uh, this thinking. Um, great emphasis is made, um, uh, is placed on the idea of fostering activities um, in, what's, um, in what's called an active grid, in a sense conceiving of the grid plan of William Penn City continuing to live um, under and maybe on top of this, the, uh, the architecture of the parkway, the design of the parkway, um, establishing a smaller scale at which smaller scale activities could take place. And it occurs to me in also in, in an important way, perhaps, and, and I hopefully so, literally connecting those parkway activities to the gridded street and the neighborhoods that surround the parkway. Because again, while we are thinking of a parkway for the world and for the entire city, I mean, it is the neighborhood park for this area as well. And I think that's an important consideration. Um, um, the, um, the active grid is an attractive idea, again, as depends on, depending, depends as many of the proposals have on somehow generating all of that activity um, uh, to, to fill the spaces. Um, food production um, is an interesting addition uh, to the usual suspects like lists of things that you can do in an urban park, um, which of course, to me, suggests that there will be places to serve food as well, which sounds terrific. Thank you, David. And Mitchell. Well, thank you. Uh, also enjoyed the presentation, and I appreciated there were a lot of what ifs and a lot of choices, which to me, uh, this team is really saying we may not have all the answers, we have ideas, uh, but we have the questions we want to engage the public in. So I did appreciate uh, the choices and a lot of the what ifs. Uh, the people campus, I kind of translated to a people focus that was well uh, appreciated. Uh, and I had a similar reaction to the food connector I said, okay, that's a different idea, but this is about ideas, big ideas. So uh, that's something I'd like to see how that evolves uh, over time. Uh, I too appreciated uh, the three ideas, the green machine, active grid, the urban 
uh, theater, uh, and I too uh, enjoy seeing the kid apart, which once again empowers the community to be part of the problem solving process about what works and what makes sense. But thinking about those themes, uh, the parkway is very formal. And all the ideas, not all, uh, the Green Machine is introducing informality into a formal space. Uh, could be a bit of a challenge. Uh, the Green Machine gives you an option of informality. The active grid gives you formal, but a different type. And then the urban theater is somewhere in between. So once again, this team is offering choices to engage the public. What I did like, uh, because I do like lighting in public spaces, is bringing on a lighting consultant that can do uh, have a very dramatic effect on what a space will look like. Uh, it could set mood. Uh, it could do a number of things, and that's four seasons out of the year. So I will uh, acknowledge the fact that you did have a lighting consultant. Uh, and I think I'm looking at my final comments. Uh, once again, I absolutely enjoy the fact that water is being embraced. I agree with, with David that uh, all three understand that this is an important move that must be made as this parkway evolves into a park. The connection to water, the connection to the river, whether for climate adaptation, uh, for therapeutic purposes, is the right uh, move to go in. So with that, I conclude my comments. Excellent. Thank you, guys. So this concludes the kind of presentation and the lightning rounds, which were incredibly thoughtful and I think provocative in their own right, uh, very responsive to, and I think engaging with uh, the ideas that were presented by the different teams. So I feel uh, like in many ways we've done our job, but we now have another uh, kind of part of the program that we'd like to end with. I'd like to uh, bring up Michael Carroll, and I don't know if Catherine, if you're joining us. Um, our our city leadership, whom I mentioned at the beginning, really the, uh, the the drivers, no pun intended, behind this project, and what will I think give uh, confidence to hopefully the citizenry as well as funders that this the city means business this time, that this is a not just going to be other plans on the wall, although they as we've seen in the past, the Parkway takes a long time. But we have uh, two very important leaders here with us today who, whom we uh, appreciate in terms of your dedication to, to doing this. So I'd like to start off with the two of you as we kind of conclude our, our thoughts for the evening. Um, in uh, working with the team at the city as well as my, my team at Lindy, we tried to distill what we heard this evening and what we had uh, seen before the evening into a set of broad themes. Again, we don't want to necessarily talk about projects per se, saying I like this or I like that, but if we could elevate this discussion to the level of themes, I'll, I'll let you know what the themes are, that at least that we have identified. You're welcome to bring your own to the party. Um, so we have uh, three big ones. One, we're calling history and modernity. Uh, if you think of um, what we're calling Gray Bear 2.0, uh, we were thinking of nature in the city as another one and this connecting the park and the river. And the third, this kind of toggling back and forth between the local and the global and mixing the ingredients of a world-class 21st century city. So that's how we at least have kind of cut uh, thematically what we've heard today. And, and I think they cut across all of the proposals. Um, we, also, we also identified some what we call cross-cutting themes, inclusivity and connections, design as engagement place making and place keeping, urban theater, and then keeping the car at bay, a park in place of a parkway. So with that, Mike and Catherine, and you can, you're free to go wherever you like. Um, we, would like we would like to hear from you as implementers, what excites you as government leaders in terms of new ideas that you could bring to fruition? This is a, this is a moment for you to uh, kind of think outside the box and begin to, uh, uh, kind of put a stake in the ground. I, I will go first. Um, I, I'm just ex very excited, first of all, that we got here. <laughs> 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 that we got to this moment right now, Agreed. you know, with all the possible hurdles and hiccups and, you know, even having visa issues, we really were presented with three tremendous uh, sets of ideas about what we could do. And um, I'm really impressed not only that we got ideas about uh, you know, not just what, 
but also how, and that's so important, and, and also why. And so when we're thinking about getting into this work, um, you know, we can expect, however it all turns out, that we're going to be very well equipped with um, not just the, the way to get into some endpoint, to get to an endpoint, but also with really great thinking about the process, how to evolve people, how to create connections in the work of getting to where the endpoint is, uh, but also, you know, the spirit of a process. And one of the things that I'm recognizing every day is that the process works so much better when there's something animating it, when there's a purpose to it that people can really latch on to and get involved in the work and not feel like they're going to be detached if they get frustrated. They're going to be excluded from it. So I'm thrilled. I'm really just happy with uh, everything I've seen and heard to this point, and I'm looking forward to really digging even deeper. Great. Catherine, do you want to share? Anything? Sure. Um, so first of all, I want to say to the to the three teams, just my heartfelt gratitude. Um, you, the work you've done is extraordinary. And uh, I turn to Patrick, my colleague, who's Patrick Morgan, who's been, been leading this project along with Harris. Thank you, Patrick. And I, I said, I don't remember what we paid them, but it wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, That's the sword <laughs> it never is, right, kids? Never is. Um, and I and I know you guys are, um, you know, uh, in this design world, uh, are so used to, um, you know, <laughs> low fees, um, but or no fees if you're with the community design collaborative. Um, you know, to to um, presenting these ideas and then, uh, you know, sitting back and listening to people's reaction to it. You know, that's the world you. You're, you grow up in, um, it sounds, it's horrific to me. <laughs> um, and I work in city government. Um, but, uh, but you know, it's funny, my, my family watches this show, America's Got Talent. Do you guys know that show? And I, I feel a little bit like we're Howie Mandel and, and uh, Heidi Klum. I'm Heidi, I'm Heidi Klum, that's what, that scenario. Um, but, but I will say that, um, you know, it's extraordinary the work that you put into it and, and the, the um, you know the the different um, just elements that you that you drew out that both resonate in many ways things we've heard you know I've had I had visceral reactions to several things that I'm like oh, oh. yeah <laughs> and then oh, you know and uh, and then brand new things that we haven't haven't thought of or heard before um, and that's exactly what we want out of this process right we want you know external third party validators who stamp some some an idea that we've had but you know haven't been able to for whatever reason implement and then we want brand new vision that that uh, you know we haven't thought of and that comes from that you know, new perspective that's brought to to a space that we have taken for granted in many ways uh, for many years. Um, things that resonated with me, the connection to the river. I'm, I'm a fourth generation Philadelphian. I've lived in this city all my life. I never miss a festival or party on the parkway. I walk it every day. I forget that it's the river's right there. I mean, until you see the aerial view, you're like, what? What connection to the river? Am I right? Like, what connection to the river? And then you're like, what? There's like a, the river's right there um, it, because it's got nothing to do with the parkway right now. You know, um, it might as well be five miles away um, for how we interact with it as Philadelphians on the parkway. Um, it, the idea of, you know, from, from you know, I'm, I, I run a city agency. So from a logistical standpoint, you know, the idea of how we tie infrastructure in um, to, um, to this design, this incredible, beautiful design also has to consider infrastructure and you know how we have to stop you know killing ourselves to make things happen on the parkway uh you know and and how do we how do we make that easier for us so that all of the things we dreamed about can happen seamlessly and without impacting negatively you know everybody except the people that end up at that concert or that walk or run um and then um you know i, I love that some people began to think about operations and maintenance and revenue and opportunities because you know as much as i would love to believe that you know the city is you know th through through public resources this is just going to be funded and supported it's just not the case and uh we need to at, at the same time we're thinking about the vision we have to think about how that vision is going to be realized and how that vision is going to be sustained and maintained for generations to come so um i i just I just thank you and, uh, you know, really blown away by, by what we saw today. And I, I want to thank you three as well um, for for your feedback it was just completely inspiring and insightful. And for the time that you guys have taken to be here this evening, 
thank you so much and to everybody for being a part of this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Catherine and, and Michael, really for, uh, for bringing it to this point. I mean, we, we are here because of you. That you have decided to, to say, hey, we're going we're gonna to attack this now. We're going to do it. To together. be clear, we're here because of William Penn Foundation. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mike and I, <laughs> too. William Penn invests in leadership. So you, you, can't, you can't wiggle out of that one. This is, uh, this is all on the two of you. Um, and I will just say uh, between, uh, Catherine, your enthusiasm and your vision and just your ability to rally the troops around an idea. And Michael, you as an engineer, to have the kind of ability to see beyond kind of a slide rule is not kind of what we use anymore, but I grew up with an engineer, is, is just incredibly refreshing. So it has been a, a really wonderful opportunity working not only with the two of you, but with the team that you've assembled, because uh, the, 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 your values have, have redounded down to them. So thank you. Um, we do have a couple more minutes if, if uh, folks will bear with us, and I'd like to still sort of dwell a little bit on high at these broad themes. And, but at the same time, I think we want to stimulate a conversation. So feel free to cut in. This is not uh, going to be a structured three minute, three minute, three minute. Uh, but I'm going I'm to start with David and have him kind of kick off a conversation about this uh, relationship between history and modernity. We've talked a lot about the, uh, the formality of the parkway, its, its origins, and yet the 21st century has different demands and different interests and, and in some cases different values. How do we rectify that? Well, I, I, want to, I want to comfort you and say, don't be afraid of history. Um, in this case, and in fact, in many cases, history is your friend, because this, the parkway is fundamentally a modern artifact. Um, and in fact, all of Philadelphia is a modern artifact. Uh, the rationality and the abstraction of the 1683 grid plan is a fundamentally modern thing. The parkway, a straight line between two points, that's all it is, is a fundamentally modern abstraction. Abstractions can seem cold and remote, um, and, and in some circumstances they can, but they also are remarkably liberating, um, capable of being adapted and, and reformulated and bent to a variety of causes. And I think the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, considered in the way I just described it, is basically a straight line between two big things, um, is one of the most potent but versatile abstractions on the face of the planet. Uh, and to be able to work with something that strong, but yet something that is capable of so many inflections and changes, is very exciting, um, and I do think that it is, um, it, it is therefore uh, my job as the historian to say, don't be afraid of history. Um, the uh, history, uh, history ended yesterday and will continue tomorrow. Uh, and, um, and, and in this case, it is a modern history in a great modern city that has this equipment of physical forms that, uh, that, can, that, that I think are as, as valuable and as meaningful in the, in the future as they have been in the past, and, and maybe even more so uh, because of the challenges that we, have, we face as we move into the 21st century. Wonderful. Uh, any thoughts from the other panelists? Uh, response to what David said or otherwise? So I, I, get, I have, a, a, I guess, a comment and a question. Right. I think my first question is, is Philadelphia ready to embrace history? Um, I think a lot of our, are, they ready to embrace are we ready to embrace the history? Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of important history that relates back to the parkway and not all of it is positive. And I think a lot of times that we don't like to tell those stories in Philadelphia, they're painful, they're dirty. We, we don't particularly enjoy rehashing them. Um, and I think of, you know, a lot of the parkway is hearkening back to kind of the foundation of our country. And there's a lot of things that we're going to be unearthing as we, I'm not going to say the word either, but as we start to prepare for the 250th anniversary of the city. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we've got to wrestle with what a lot of that means when this space was designed. Um, I think we also, uh, you know, I, when I think of the parkway, the iconic image that I always remember is... Um, the picture of uh, you know Edmund Bacon and and the wall in the in the city planning commission, and them drawing the like parkway out and again not our 
best story, our well-known story. Um, and so I wonder how do we wrestle with some of those iconic but also notorious histories and, and still tell them and do it in a way where we still honor some of the moves that were made, right? Because there, while there are, aren't always pretty, there were still beautiful things that were created from some of them. Like, I mean, I do like walking down the parkway. Having that connection to City Hall is really important. Do I care as much about William Penn <laughs> as other people? Maybe not, but, um, and then I think we've had some recent scars, right? I think of the beginning of the pandemic. I think of the, um, the encampment that was happening on the parkway. How are we embracing all of these stories and all of these realities? Because they happen for a reason. Um, and I think trying to figure out how we navigate that in a public space is gonna be really important. Yeah, now you've touched on, I think, the, the, the issue of the day really, that came out of the, the last year, is how we grapple with this. And, and we, as we were writing the RFP, were extremely aware of it. We didn't have any answers, but we knew it had to be a piece of this project. Mitchell. When I tackle a project, I try to have this peripheral vision that includes both history and present day, but I use in three words to categorize it. Hindsight, insight, and foresight. To understand a place, I need to have that hindsight about what happened, what were the stories, why it was developed, both the good and bad history, because I agree with you, as we're unpacking, stories are uh, history, stories are being told that's making a lot of people uncomfortable, but that is the hindsight we need to go forward. Inside is the understanding what is happening at this moment. There are some people that want to brush it under the rug. They want to be allies, figure out how to be helpful. But we have to have the insight to understand what's happening now. And then hopefully that will give us the foresight to where we're going. So this project must involve that hindsight, the insight, which all the teams have really delved into, both the hindsight and insight, but then the foresight, which this process really captures. And so to me, that's how I grapple with it. That There's no way I can figure out what can go forward because one person may talk about the architecture. The other one said, I got married on that corner. Um, this happened on that location. I took a walk with my father a month before he passed away. You conjure up different memories. And so that hindsight, insight, and foresight, I hope, will inform what is the right direction to go into the future. That's a great way to kind of really think about in, in encapsulating not only history, but the, the present in, to inform the <laughs> Forming the future. Thank you for that. Um, Catherine and Michael, do you want to? I'm not pressuring you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead. I mean, I, again, I'm, I'm very glad that we have such experts here to, <laughs> to speak for us. So I, I, um, I think the question about history is really important from another perspective, and it has to do, I think, tying back to this concept of function and maintenance and, you know, just the nitty gritty of making a parkway work for a city, right? And um, we have to look at the good and the bad of that as well. And I think when we're thinking about what the parkway has done, how it's served the city, the fact that there's so many cars on the parkway is part of that history and, and the way people throughout the city relate to uh, that function, that function of the parkway, what we've done to kind of make that work uh, and how it's impacted anyone else who wanted to use the parkway in an exclusive way to, to go back to what Mitch was saying before is going to require a lot of unpacking. And it's going to require a lot of unpacking both socially and technically. Uh, but we have to do that work. I mean, we really need to get into that. And we're going to see a lot of intersections of different issues when we start to do that work, not just about you know traffic, but also about co commerce, social inclusivity. and What's gratifying is I think everybody in this room is prepared for that struggle. Everyone has kind of said some of the things that you want to hear and shown some of the images that you want to see that that's not a surprise, that there's been some preparation, some gearing up for really this march uh, into the future of the parkway that is encouraging to me. And I feel like when we do get into this, we're going to need that attitude to maintain itself and I think we will. I think we'll see that that conviction is really there and that's going to see us through. I agree with you. I think I think the moment is now to do this precisely because of, of what we've gone through the past 18 months. Mitchell, I want um, to see if you can dwell a little bit on this notion of nature in the city. 
and this connections to the to the river and the park. This is probably the biggest movement happening across the world, not just in New York, but everyone is trying to bring nature back to the city as we understand the planet's getting warmer, climate change. But I'm going to get personal for a second because this is the best way I could connect why I believe nature of the cities is, is important. 2020, for many of us, was a difficult year. And I'll be honest with you, it broke me. It broke me mentally and emotionally from first, and Catherine could understand, I'm sure Mike as well, that our park employees were essential workers and had to go to work. When everything was closed, we had to keep our parks open and they were scared to death. And we did everything we could to make sure they were safe because when everything else was closed, parks remained open. The stress of that was enormous. And it got worse as time went on. Could you open it? Do we close it? What do we do? How do we staff it? And then we had the death of George Floyd. And, and as a black man, that broke me too because my entire life, I had to keep my black identity in the closet. I could not express myself as a commissioner and as a man of color. I had to hang it at the door and I had to just go through the motions. And then the combination of leading a large staff, we have 10,000 employees leading a leadership team, not knowing what's next, and then dealing with the protest. And then my own employees were very concerned that they were going through the same trauma and stress. It all came flooding out at one time. But what I found during that time is each day I would go for a walk. And I realized, as I said earlier, that our parks became these sanctuaries of sanity. I went there to heal. I went there to feel joy. I went there to protest. I'm a runner and there was a group that was running to protest and they actually made me the co-captain. They said, Commissioner, we want to protest, we need a permit. I said, no, you're expressing your first amendment rights, go protest. They were like, are you kidding me? So every protest started and ended in a park and I was right there by their side. For me, it was important. They were shocked because there's a police over there, I'm at the podium speaking and I said, Commissioner, they're all turning. I felt it was my right. I was not on duty that I had to express how I felt because it was a painful, painful process. But I found how nature became such therapeutic to all of us, not just for physical health, but for mental health. And people were going to those spaces to introduce nature. That's one thing. So it has both the physical and mental benefits. On the environmental side, uh, taking less cars, introducing more nature, it cools the city, air quality, work water quality, but it just makes sense. Stormwater capture, all the benefits we could talk about. It is so important, and London's trying to be a park city. The importance of bringing nature to the city helps us be better human beings. And in fact, I just wrote a piece for a book that's coming out from Georgia Tech about how we have to view our parks and public spaces and green spaces as part of our healthcare system as part of our healthcare system. So if you want to have a livable city, you want to have a healthy city, both from an environmental point of view, from a physical health point of view, and a mental health point of view, bringing nature back to the city, the trees, the land, the water, will make you a livable city, not just to attract people, but to keep them there and have productive, healthy lives. So to me, it is absolutely important. Uh, thank you, Mitchell. Uh, Taya or David, do you want to expound on anything you heard or add to it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think you touched on uh, all of the kind of key points, but I also feel that um, it's about human connection, right? The, when, like to me, nature is a place where we can go and reflect on like the human condition. And when I think about parks, when they're free spaces, there's not a lot of free spaces in cities anymore. And I think that's uh, when we're talking about equity in the last year, we're talking about places where people can come together. Um, oftentimes the public, free public spaces are the only spaces that we know that's gonna happen, right? Any other place you have to make an active decision to go in and either engage other people. Um, and so I think to keep as many of these free spaces open and, and inclusive are critical. And nature is really the thing that 
pulls people out because we can all sit at home. We've learned that very well over the past year. <laughs> like, what is the different thing that brings us out? It's a nice day. Everybody's going to go outside, right? If you want to go and see the lakefront, everybody's going to come outside. Um, and will we find um, kind of harsh times in nature when nature is not super visible, when it's cloudy, when it's raining, when it's foggy, people don't go outside. So like the driving thing that's bringing us together in all, all those public spaces typically has to do something to do with nature anyway. So to amplify it, to be able to celebrate it in those public spaces is it also a way to make sure that we, uh, one, get more people to come and use the space, but also create like, really welcoming and, and, and gathering spices. Yeah. Thank you, Ty. David, any thoughts? Well, I guess I suppose the, the most obvious and important thing to say is that human beings are part of nature um, and that the celebration of nature, um, our fellow feeling with nature is, dare I say, natural and it's an enormously potent thing. Um, and I think that those of us who think about d human design um, uh, need to be students of nature. All right, one more uh, topic, and then we can we can let the, let the class go. Um, Taya, this one's for you. Um, reflect a little bit on uh, this connection between the local and the global. Your your work is so hyper local, and yet your vision is extremely global. Uh, give us some uh, kind of reflections on that. Yeah, I think it's, this is a challenge, right? I mean, I think uh, when you think of a space as grand as the Parkway, I think everybody can close their eyes and think of another grand space somewhere in the world that they've either seen in a photograph or they've experienced in person. Um, and there's many of them that start to have unique, I mean, many of them have similar features. And there's some that have some unique features. A lot of the unique features we cannot replicate, right? Because that we can't recreate the Arc de Triomphe because it, it's representing a time and a place that we just didn't experience. Um, but we can't create our own sort of, you know, dare I say the word monuments in 2021, but <laughs> we can create our own moments of celebration in the city. Um, and, I, and I think trying to figure out what are the moments we're gonna celebrate, how we celebrate them, what that means is gonna be really important. Um, I also feel like uh, when you try to navigate between the local and the, and the global, it's really important that it doesn't become Epcot Center, right? And so like, how do you create something that uh, locals can see themselves in and feel like it's theirs? And in the city, I got 10 years in Philadelphia, I've learned this is very important to Philadelphians. Um, and at the same time, create a space that attracts people from other places. Um, and I think we're gonna have to navigate that. And I'm really curious to see how that, how that turns out. But you know, Philadelphia is a city of underdogs and I feel like, this is a space in our city that's not an underdog. So like, what does it mean? I think we're gonna have to grapple with a little bit of our collective identity in the, in the design of this space. Uh, we do not live on this planet in isolation. We're all connected. The pandemic does not stop at the border. Climate change does not stop at the border. And there are places all over the planet that are coming up with innovative ideas that we could all benefit from. There could be urban innovation and then it could be urban replication. I don't mind if I find a great idea to try it in New York City or when I move to Raleigh to Raleigh. In fact, we have this program called Cool Pools. We transform pools that were municipal pools into resort. I got that idea from Swim Philly. And I can go on and on and on if you adapt it, if it works. So the fact that we can look to our global partners, I'm inspired by what's happening in Barcelona. I'm inspired about what's happening in Paris. I'm inspired by what's happening in London. And then you can adapt it to your local environment to see how it works. But there at the front end, setting the trend that we can learn from, and who knows who you'll inspire by taking the park way and making it a park, that there'll be others that now have the courage to say, wait a minute, if Philadelphia can do that, we can do it too. So we don't sit in isolation on this planet. We can all learn from each other and good ideas are contagious. And so if I see a good idea, I will recognize, I'll always say, oh, cool pools, that came from Swim Philly. This idea came from that city. I have a program called Parks Without Borders that came from a visit when I was in Bilbao. And so you wanna be able to take great ideas because the bottom line is we all benefited from them. So I enjoy the local, hyper-local to the global. 
And in fact, we have a team that is international. And like I said, those conversations happen. Even the local firms are talking about uh, what they've seen across the planet. So we're all in this game together. Uh, we rise as a planet, we're gonna fall as a planet. And my hope is that the hyper-local and the global will work well together to create a better, better future for all of us. Awesome. Uh, David. Uh, this uh, one, you're going to be invited to stay and run for mayor. <laughs> uh, your thoughts of Ed will uh, conclude. In and the months. prospects are good. Um, <laughs> because, uh, because with him as mayor, and <laughs> no, because the visual arts, because architecture, city planning and landscape architecture don't require Google Translate, um, they are the most important foundational elements, I think, of international community throughout all of human history. Um, visual messages sent across the world resonate powerfully and continue to resonate through time as well as across geography. Um, this is a fundamentally international enterprise, um, which we, to some extent, have a right to claim an important leadership position in. Um, and we can do as well as, as or better than anyone. And um, I think that's the challenge for us here. Thank you, David. Thank you to our panelists. I'd like to take one moment to ask all the uh, design team members who are here today to stand up. <laughs> said truly an extraordinary effort and an embarrassment of riches in terms of ideas you have come through I think beyond our wildest imaginations thank you to David to Mitchell to Taya to Michael and Catherine uh, it's now time to go home <laughs>